Hi guys, this is Pradeep. Today we will take another topic that is related to record to report. Uh, this topic is related to particularly month end activities from record to report. Whenever any uh, transaction we are going to record, so what are the different options we have, how we are going to record the transaction. So we know that from accounting point of view, we have two options are there. So one is your cash basis or we will go for accrual basis, which already we studied in our graduation, post graduation. Now, if you are going to record the transaction on cash basis, so in that case, if whenever the actual we are going to receive the funds, that time we are going to record the transactions, whether it is related to revenue or expenditure. If we'll check this PPT, you will find that here I have selected, this is the cash accounting basis, cash basis accounting. So whether it is revenue or it is cost, we are going to debit or we are going to credit our cash account or our funds account. So on the basis of the real cash transactions. If we are going to receive the funds, so that time we are going to debit the account. If you are going to make the payment, that time we are going to credit the account. So revenues are recognized when cash is received. Expenditures also recognize when cash is paid. So in this case, this is not more scientific method. And in fact, you will find that in reality, we are not following this one when we are going to record or we are going to maintain our books of accounts, particularly in companies or in corporates. This is for small form where we are going for single entry bookkeeping. In that case, maybe this method is helpful. So that is why third point, if you'll see that this is not acceptable as were all the accounting principles. So if you are going to follow GAAP or any accounting principles, local accounting, accounting standards of your country. So in that case, this method is not acceptable. So that's why hardly will find nowadays where we are recording our books of accounts on the basis of CAS. Next coming to the accrual basis. Accrual basis means on the basis of due, we are going to record the transactions. So that means transactions in the uh, uh, transactions are going to be recorded when actually the events is going to occur. Whether you have received the funds, whether you have not received the funds, still we are going to record the transaction. So this is, you can say in reality, you will find the more uses and in a business in month end we have some activities are there and we will take one real time business scenario and we will see that so that's why i said that transactions are recorded in the period in which events actually occur whether it is revenue or whether it is expenditure so we are going to record that transactions not on the basis of cash receipt not on the basis of the payment when actually it is due so that is known as your accrual or deferral concept, which is very important concept from the month end activities, the team who is handling the record to report, they are going to manage it, right? So we will take that this one business scenarios. So quickly, let's understand this one. So we have to I have taken here one ex example related to expense letter, I will add one income scenario also. So here we have to incur the expenditure, but the amount is not yet paid. You just assume that uh, here I have taken some date. Uh, for example, let's say on 25th April, the rent is due, okay? So let's say office rent is due, but still we have not received any invoice from BIM, from your vendor. So what will be the accounting entry? If we will follow the cash accounting, so in that case, we are not going to do anything because we have not received any invoice, so we are not going to record any transaction in our books of accounts, although rent is due. But as per the accrual concept, in this case, the accounting entry is your expense is going to debit, means rent account is going to debit, but as we have not received the invoice from vendor, whether it is PO or non-PO, whatever, as we have not received any invoice from vendor, so in that case, we are not going to credit the vendor. So in that case, but as you are going to debit the rent account, so something you have to credit. So what account we are going to credit here? Outstanding rent, outstanding expenditure. So rent account is going to debit and payable is going to credit. So in, in place of payable, I have taken here outstanding expenditure. So outstanding expenditure is going to credit. This is the transaction we are going to record in the books of accounts on 25th April because that day the rent was due. Then on 1st May, system is going to reverse the transaction. Means user is going to do something, automatically system is going to reverse the transaction. So on 1st May, when the accrual execution will be there, so this outstanding expenditure is going to debit and the rent account is going to credit. That means the original entry which was posted on 25th May, uh, 25th April, on 1st May, this entry will be reversed by the system. It's because, coming to the next one, on 4th May, we have received this invoice from vendor. So rent account, actually we are going to post one invoice here. And this time I'm going to show you one non-PO invoice here. 
who is going to post this entry, this invoice posting? Of course, the R to R team is not going to post the invoice, so it is maybe handled by the payable team. So we will do it here. So rent account is going to debit and your vendor account is going to credit on 4th May. Then finally, we are going to proceed with the payment, maybe on same day or next day, whatever. But in this case, accrual deferral concept, if you'll see, on 24th April, the deferral entry will be, uh, accrual entry will be posted here, accrual expenditure entry we are going to post here. And on 1st May, the original accrual entry is going to divorce. So that account will be nullified. You will find a zero balance here. Then on 4th May, we are, let's say we have received the invoice. So that we are going to post here and then we will proceed with the payment. I hope the business example is clear. Now, same thing we are going to post in the system. Now to this, uh, for, uh, we need GL account. So I need here one GL account, rent account. I need one GL account, outstanding expenditure account. So let me create this GL account so that it will be easy for us to understand this particular business scenario. Now I'm going to log into the SAP system and we will try this scenario. Now I'm going to create the GL master. If you are familiar with the GL master, you know that the transaction code is FS00. So I will enter here FS00. If you are not familiar with the transaction code, then you can also navigate the system, accounting, financial accounting, then go to general ledger, then go to master record, GL account, then go to create the GL account. So this is my live batch uh, company code. So here only I'm going to uh, show you this presentation. So I need to create one GL account as rent. So rent is my operational expenditure. So let me quickly create that here. Okay, so this is S4 HANA system. So that's why I need to select here my primary cost because it will be part of my cost of production calculation. So this will be office rent. Sort key I have selected here the posting date and I need to add here cost element category. Again, it is related to controlling. R to R point of view, no need to worry. It is part of the cost center posting point of view, I uh, because this will be part of my cost of production calculation. In future, I will use that in my live session. And uh, here I need to select the field status group. So this GL account created, office rent, this GL account created. Now I need to create one more account as outstanding expenditure and outstanding expenditure or outstanding expense that is part of your uh, balance sheet account. So here I need to create one GL account. Okay, so in general, I have selected here outstanding expenditure, not only rent because I can use it somewhere other expenditure also. Now by using these two GL account, I am going to post one accrual entry and assume that today is 25th April and on 25th April, I'm going to post the accrual entry because it's already due, but invoice we have not received. So transaction code is FBS1, select here 25th April. This posting date also I will take here 25th April. Take this one is related to leading ledger entry because here I'm working on parallel accounting. And uh, here we have to specify one reversal region. So reversal region, it is related to accrual deferral. So I have selected here accrual deferral and I need to specify here reversal date. As I said, this entry will be reversed by system on 1st May. So I'm going to select here my reversal date as 1st May. Then after that, uh, it will be my accounting entry. So GL account is going to debit. So if you are familiar with the posting key, that is GL debit. 4-0 and we need to check which account we are going to debit. So we are going to debit our office rent account, which is 4 0 double one. 4 0 double one is going to be debit and amount is 5000. Here I need to select the cost center. As I said, it is expenditure. So expenditure need to be booked with a particular cost center. So I need to select that one. 
it is not related to our current topic but anyway when the expense will be posted so one cost object need to be linked with that so here i need to specify one cost center so let me take here the cost center this one okay and this one is our rent provision rent provision for april then coming to credit so here we are not going to credit the vendor so we are going to credit our payable account sorry uh, we are going to credit here outstanding account that is our balance sheet account and we will take this account 3011 3011 continue simulate this entry so now you can see this document is posted and let's analyze this document so here if you'll see the rent account is debited and uh, your outstanding expenditure is credited and we are going to check this rent account office rent account if you'll check this document so this is your accounting entry right so this is your accounting entry this office rent debit and outstanding credit important here is if you'll go to the header section of the document here you will find that the document is posted and uh, here you can see the reversal date so whatever the reversal date we have entered so accordingly this is reflected or it is reflecting in this particular document so on 1st may we are going to reverse this entry and when i will reverse it i will not specify this document so user one particular user is assigned for this activity so that user is going to just run for all the documents because in uh, in real case only one document will not be posted one accrual entry will not be posted so multiple accrual entries will be there in the company code so that's why user is going to select that and they are going to reverse it so once they will reverse it let's see what is going to happen so now let's keep it as it is now i'm going to post the reversal entry and let's say how this reversal entry is going to work so this reversal we are going to do through transaction code f.81 now here i'm going to select the company code and I'm not going to select anything here. So let's check in the test run how many documents are there. I just posted one document, so you will find only one document. But here uh, you can search with the document number, but I'm not going to enter anything. I just enter my company code and I'm going to execute it. Check. So it's showing that one document is posted, the document number that time which we have seen, that document number 1003. You can also cross check it. What is the document number? 1003. So this document 1003 was posted as one accrual entry and it is ready for the reversal and that is 1st May. And by this time, all the closing activities are completed related to your April month. So everything done. Now we are in May month. So period also closed, April period closed and May period is open. So that is again support work handled by the consultant. So all these things are done. Now I am going to execute this reverse document. Okay, so here I can remove the test run and I can execute it. So now when I will execute it, you will find that the document will be reversed. So you will get one more document. So here I sorted the data with 25th April. Now let me select here the range from so here I will select 1st May and execute. So there are some more entries because as I said, it is my live class data. So some other entries are there. So to avoid the confusion, let me take here this GL account 3011 and 4011. If you'll check this rent account, what is the balance here? Zero. So this one is your accrual entry, which was posted on 25th April, this one. And uh, on 1st May, the reversal entry posted. So document 1003 document is actual accrual entry and 1004 reversal entry. If you'll analyze this document 1004, you will find that this is a reversal entry for your original document and just river entry re opposite entry is posted here. So rent earlier it was debited. Now it is got credited and outstanding expenditure is debited and uh, uh, outstanding expenditure earlier credited now it is debited and if you check the header portion of the document you will find that this is a reversal document of which document the original accrual document 1003 now what we are going to do next that is purely related to current month activity so rent was due last month but as invoice was not received so we posted the accrual entry now it is reversed now i am going to post this uh, invoice so this invoice assume that today is 5th may and uh, we are going to post this in invoice so this is a b60 entry we are going to post non-po invoice right so you can use a b60 
or you can navigate here like accounting then go to financial accounting then go to accounts payable then go to document entry you may use fury also fury application outgoing invoice also you can enter so uh, that is you can select here fb60 okay and uh, we are going to post that that particular invoice in this particular company code so you need to select one vendor so i'm just going to select one vendor here Just randomly I'm going to select here one vendor let's say this this vendor okay and assume that it is today's date is 5th May so I'm selecting here this entry is related to which date so this entry is related to 25th April but invoice we are posting on we are posting this invoice on 5th May as for example so amount will be 5000 And what account you are going to debit so vendor you are going to credit and debit account will be your expenditure account the rent account okay so this account is going to debit 5000 and cost center is required done and now we are going to post it this time we are posting the actual invoice okay here I'm getting one configuration error so for this particular document type number range is miss missing it is nothing related to the current example it is one configuration is pending let me quickly add that one so I'm posting a document related to document type care and in this company code it is missing so I need to add that one So finally the document the invoice posted this time it is actual vendor invoice let's check that one so now i'm going to check uh, if i will check my gl account entry so i will get that one so here if i will enter four zero double one okay let me remove all the dates okay so you can see this is my accrual entry this is the reversal entry on first may and this is my invoice posted on fifth may so you check this entry this is my expenditure entry so this time the rent account debited and your vendor is credited okay so as last month the invoice was not received so we did all these activities or we posted the accrual invoice now you will find one payable entry is there because we posted the vendor so the concerned person is going to our concern department is going to check the payable entry so this is your payable entry now after that the normal payment AP team is going to make the payment so in this current example we explored that in if any actual entry is not posted or and we are doing the accounting on the basis of accrual basis so how we are going to handle the expenditure and income in this example i have shown here one accrual expenditure in one more example i will show you the income also